Hello, it's Farron of Farron Celeste. In this tutorial, we're going to be going over the different file types that you can upload into the Cricut Design Space software to use to cut with your Cricut cutting machine. We're going to be going over the most common file types, which are .jpeg, .png, .svg, and .dxf. You can use any of these file types to cut with your Cricut, but I'll be showing you why the .svg is the easiest to work with, especially when you're making layered paper projects like paper flowers. For this tutorial, I'm going to be demonstrating with a very basic paper flower design. For those of you who aren't familiar with me, again, my name's Farron. I'm the owner and designer behind Farron Celeste, and I specialize in realistic looking cardstock paper flowers that are designed specifically to be made with Cricut and Silhouette cutting machines. So when you're making layered paper projects like paper flowers, there are different shapes that you will cut. And it's really important that these shapes are in proportion and line up correctly when you're assembling. So the different file type can really make a big impact or big difference on that, on how successful your project is going to come out once you have all your pieces cut and you actually go to assemble your flower or your card or whatever kind of layered project you're making. So the best file type to use for layered paper projects is a SVG. So I have an SVG up on my screen right now. So let's talk about what an SVG file is. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. So let's break that apart. Scalable. Scalable means that the file can be resized bigger or smaller without losing the image quality. So if I click on the image and click and drag to make it bigger or make it smaller, the shapes are just as clear as when I originally uploaded the file. It doesn't get all blurry. It doesn't get pixel all pixelated. It doesn't distort the original petal shapes at all. Vector means that the cut lines are already set. So as soon as you upload the SVG file, the Cricut already knows that we want to cut four separate petal shapes. The different petal shapes are also on different layers. This is at least how I design my SVG files. So that gives you control over what you are going to cut. For example, if I click on the image and click ungroup, and then I come over my to my layers panel, I can click on the eyeball next to the petal shapes and it hides the petal shape. So if I only have this petal shape on the screen, I'm telling the Cricut I only want to cut this one petal shape right now. If for some reason I didn't want to cut them all. So the SVG file gives you more flexibility. So one other note on the SVG file is that if you see this last petal shape, it has this little circle in the center of it. That's because I want the cutting machine to cut this little hole in the very center of this petal. This is just a little trick that we use with paper flowers. But when you move this image around, that little circle stays with this petal because it's intended that that little hole gets cut from the center of this petal. When you move it around, it stays as one unit the Cricut understands with the SVG that it's supposed to be a part of this shape. It's not going to be a separate shape over here somewhere that the Cricut thinks it needs to cut separately. It's a part of this shape. So now let me show you how you would even get this SVG file into your software. So you want to start with a new project, click upload, click upload image, click browse, and then you'll need to have saved an SVG file onto your computer. So if you are buying files off of Etsy, a lot of times they'll come with different file formats. You're going to want to choose the one that says .svg. So I've got several different file formats here. I'm going to choose the one that has .svg in the name. So I'm going to click on that file and click open. So you'll see on this screen, you don't have to do anything because this is a vector graphic an SVG, a scalable vector graphic, the Cricut already detects where the cut lines are. It knows it wants, we want to cut these four petal shapes. So all you have to do is click upload. Now it's going to appear under your recently uploaded images. You just click on the image and click insert images. And now your SVG file is in your project. So right now the Images are grouped together, so all you have to do is come under layers and click ungroup, and now they are separate 
pieces that you can see. Now, another thing to keep in mind about SVG files is, let's just click on this petals as an example. You can see that the size of it is about three inches by three inches. Whatever size this is, is the exact size that the designer created the file as. So this is really important, for example, with my paper flowers, when you upload the template, it already comes pre-designed and set in the size that it was originally designed. That's how I set up all my flowers, all of my designs, my cards, invitations, everything. So it, everything's already pre-designed for you. You don't have to make any adjustments. Everything's already ready to go. So that's just a quick little overview about the SVG file. So I'm gonna leave this on my screen so we have something to compare the other file formats to. So let's click back on our upload option and let's move on to the other file formats. So let's go with the DXF next. DXF is more often used in the Silhouette cutting machines in the Silhouette software. I am gonna go over it here, but just keep that in mind that it's more often used with the Silhouette cutting machines. So what I'm gonna do is repeat that same process. I'm gonna click Upload Image, click Browse, and then I'm gonna locate the DXF file. So it's I've got all these different file types. I'm gonna choose the one that has .dxf in the name. So I'm gonna click on that, click open. Now you can see with this file format, it recognizes that we have four petal shapes. You don't have to tell the Cricut where you want to cut the, sh the shapes. It already understands that, but you'll notice that it's made everything black. Well, that's not a huge deal, but let's go ahead and click upload. We're gonna click on the image, click insert images, and it's gonna put it in our project. So what you can see about this file format is that while it has our cuts, our four petal shapes, you can see that it's humongous. It's way bigger than what it was originally designed as. The way that it comes into the software the width is 30 something inches, that's way too big for the machine. So you would have to you know, resize this down. And then also, if you notice, where did our little hole go in our fourth petal? It's showing up as a completely separate cut. So what I'm gonna do, just so you can see, I'm gonna ungroup these. I'm gonna change these to a different color, just so you can see the difference. Now, where's that hole again? It's hiding, it's behind this pedal. So I'm gonna have to click on this pedal, click arrange, click send to back, and there it is. See how it now it's a separate image. It thinks you want to cut that separately rather than it being in the center of your pedal. But remember with our SVG file, it was already set. You don't have to deal with all of these things getting separated. So now, I'm gonna have to make sure it's in the center. I'm gonna to center it horizontally, center it vertically. Now you can do a, um, a slice. I can click slice. And now I've got that hole in there, but it's, you know, it's just an extra step that you don't need to do, especially if you already have an SVG file format available. And you can see it created all of these extra pieces that we don't need. All right, so that's DXF. All right, now I'm gonna get rid of this DXF version of the template, let's just delete that. And let's move on to our final two file formats. So I'm gonna click back on upload. Now we're going to compare the difference between the .jpeg and the .png. Let's start with the .jpeg. So I'm gonna click upload image, click browse, and then locate the file that has the .jpg in the name. So I'm gonna click on that and then click open. Open. Now this file format is technically a picture file. So you'll see that it shows our shapes, but it's got this white background. It's got this white rectangle. So it's not recognizing where the cut lines are. If you were to upload this straight without doing any changes, it's gonna create a cut line of this rectangle. That's where it's thinking the outermost cut is, but we have to tell it that we want it to cut these petal shapes. So there's different ways you can do this. I'm just gonna click on, we'll click on the moderately complex. 
clicking on these different options and I'm going to click continue and choosing these advanced options, you can clean up the image more. Before we move on, I just want to make a public service announcement, and this is especially true when it comes to JPEG and PNG picture images. Just because pictures exist on the internet does not mean that gives rights to pull them into your cutting machine software, create these manipulations, and then be able to use it as a cut file with your machine. If that's something that you wanna do, you wanna use free images, you need to find a website that allows free use of their images. It's not okay to just do a quick Google search, copy an image, and then do these manipulations. It's one thing if you're doing it for personal use only, I still would not copy images from the internet not knowing if I'm allowed to use them or not, even if it's just for personal use. And you absolutely don't want to use them if you plan on using them for commercial use, if you're going to sell the products that you make with the images in your cutting machine software. So just a little note though, if you are interested in selling the products that you make, all of my designs come with commercial license that allow you to sell the fully assembled paper flowers or cards or invitations that you make using my cut file. So that is a valuable bonus that's included with all of my templates and workshops. So let's get back to the JPEG. So what you need to do is you need to click in this area, in that white area, and it'll make that white rectangle disappear and you'll see the these blue and white check marks. These blue and white check marks mean it's transparent. And then, so I need to scroll over to the right. I need to click in this white space to get rid of that rest of that white space. And I need to click here in the very center of my flower. So by doing that, we're telling the Cricut that we want to cut just these petal shapes and everything else is transparent. So now what we're gonna do is click continue. It's gonna give you the option of a cut image or a print then cut. I'm just gonna do the cut image and we're gonna click upload. Now it'll appear on your recent upload, so just click on the image and click insert images. Now you can see again that it made it really big and it gave us the tracing of our petals, but you can see all these rough edges. So let me resize this smaller and then I'm going to zoom in. You can see kind of these rough edges here and here compared to how nice and smooth my original SVG file was. So is this usable? Yes, it's just not great. Also, if you click on it and try to ungroup it, so if I right click and try to click ungroup or try to click ungroup up here, it's grayed out, it's not an option. So it's this image is all grouped together. So anytime you want to cut these four petals, it's going to cut them all at once. Versus with our SVG file, since they're on layers, if for some reason you only wanted to cut the smallest petal, you could could hide the other four petals and just cut this one petal. You don't have that option with the JPEG. So I'm going to turn the SVG back on. I'm going to click on the J JPEG and delete it to remove it from our project. The last file type is PNG. Out of the JPEG or the PNG file types, I recommend using the PNG and I'll show you why. So let's click upload again, click upload image, click browse. I'm going to click on the file format type that has .png in the name. I'm gonna click on that and click open. This time I'm going to use that same moderately complex image and click continue. The reason why I say to choose the PNG over the JPEG if those are your only two options is because the PNG comes with a transparent background. You don't have to delete the area around the petals because it already comes with a transparent background versus the JPEG which had a white background. So you don't have to erase anything. But because it's a picture file, you still have to go through this extra step for the Cricut to understand where these petal shapes are. So I'm gonna click continue. This time click on cut image and click upload. 
Now it's under your recent uploads, click on the image, click insert images. So you can see already that it gave us a much cleaner tracing because it already had that transparent background. But it, again, the file is huge, so let me zoom out so I can resize this smaller. And then again, you're not going to be able to ungroup this. It's anytime you want to cut these petals, it's going to cut all four petals. You don't have the option of only cutting one at a time. So you can see that you can get these other file format types to work. It's just kind of a workaround and they just aren't quite as ideal as the SVG file format. That's why I only offer my designs in the SVG file format through my Etsy store. All of my designs are full online workshops that'll teach you how to use the SVG file in Cricut Design Space and how to assemble your project once all of your pieces are cut. So if you're interested in learning how to make paper flowers or layered cards or invitations, definitely check out my Etsy store. I'll add the link in the description of this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and also follow along on Instagram for even more paper inspiration, fun projects you can make with your Cricut or your Silhouette cutting machine. I'm at Fair and Celeste on Instagram, and I hope that this tutorial was helpful.